what's going on guys all right first off a few internet issues and yeah the wind is like just absolutely kicking today uh got some tornadoes out west it's all good times all right the head on this uh, alz 450 it's actually hanging up back there i haven't even brought it over here because we're going to be look working on the actual head block because there's something majorly wrong with this thing and when i was looking at it i thought something was wrong but it never really hit me and then i remembered i had an old head that i had in a box from a previous build and it's this head right here well i took this head compared it to this head and i found out what the issue was now let me grab the feathering shaft put this through here and I'm going to basically show you guys what I did to figure this out. And then I've done a little bit of testing. There's a reason this drill's sitting here. <laughs> so, what I did is I put them on there like that. Now, can anybody see the issue with this head? If you can, post in the chat. And I'm going to, I want to kind of wait just a little bit. Hey, Chicago. Holy crap, you're early today. What's going on, man? guess I could bring that chat up but can anybody see the issue why good evening Jacob what's up brother man I'm get me a drink and then we'll dive into this all right I want you guys to take a look at that hole right there and then take a look at that hole right there. I've got a feathering shaft in here that's holding these things just basically perfect. There is an eight millimeter difference in where these holes are. Eight millimeters is exactly what I was, well, not exactly, but it's, I needed 39 millimeter links. I had 32 millimeter links. That right there is why the links that came with it, these little bitty guys, that's why they wouldn't work. <laughs> Davis. So that's where this is going to come in, and we're going to get into that here in a minute. Basically, what I did is I just took the little uh, drill bit that we use to drill out the uh, servo arm so we can put the balls on there. I put them up here on the flat, and then I measure from there down to the hole on the HK. The main shafts on this is the HK main shaft, this right here is the ALZRC main shaft. They're exactly the same. It, well, this one's got a collar. This one has a pinch roll in it. But they are exactly the same length. The holes are in the exact same spot. Everything is the same except where that hole is. So, <laughs> I uh, put, that flat, uh, put that bar across, measured down to the hole. And, yeah, there's an 8 millimeter difference. On uh, the ALZRC head, it was 23.25 millimeters from the top of that, uh, yeah, the top of the flat to the center of the hole. On uh, this uh, HK fly barless head, it was 15 and a half millimeters, which is what, 7.75 millimeter difference. A quarter millimeter, it's not gonna make a big difference. So I went ahead and measured. Do I have my other camera up? Let me see. See if I can get you guys a better picture of this. Who else is in here? So we got Jacob in Chicago. Who else? Mark. Mark had better be in here because he was like bugging the crap out of me. So let me see if I have uh, this camera up. Let's see. Yep, I do. And it's really, really dark. So I'm going to have to go in and we're going to have to play with the settings. Uh, I don't want to do that. Give me just one second, guys. I'm trying to get this thing configured. This, this camera is being really weird. Hey, Scott. 
All right, let me move my light and uh, get it down here. Because I think, yeah, I'll be able to get in on that. All right, let me go ahead and change my camera. Go ahead and save that. All right. Actually, let's do it right there. Let me focus it in here for you guys. So as you can see, right there is the HK uh, fly barless head. This one has the uh, swash driver built onto it. This one doesn't. That's not a big deal. But if you look at where that hole is, and then look at where the other hole is, you know, that's the big, big difference. And you can see I put a little score mark right there. That's where we're going to be drilling a new hole. However, there is a problem. The main shaft. I'll put my thumb to where you guys can kind of see how far it goes in. There right there. Well, you can see the hole inside there. That's as far as it goes in. So we actually have to drill out the inside of this, and then we have to drill a new hole. So, let's go ahead and go back up to the big camera. Let me turn that one off. Get back over here. Lighting in here sucks. I apologize. <laughs> so, get this uh, camera out of the way so we don't get no shavings on it because we're going to be throwing some shavings. So, let's see. We'll go ahead and pop the HK off like I said I've already measured it you guys saw the uh, saw where I scored it where we're gonna put uh, the new hole in take all of the dampers out and what I've done is I did a 0.191 inch uh, drill bit and I went ahead and ran it in there so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump up to a 193 if you guys have a drill that you can take, chuck up in there, and you can actually turn it and it's not turning, that's absolutely perfect. Because what you want to do is put this on here and then just turn it. I don't know if you guys can see that feeding on, but it's feeding on perfectly and I'm dropping metal shavings in my keyboard. But you want to watch inside the where the feathering shaft goes you want to watch because when you first start to see the tip of the uh, drill bit just the tip mind you uh you want to stop <laughs> you don't want to go in there and start chowdering all of the uh okay that right there is i can see the tip and the top and we pulled out some pretty good chunks but the reason we're doing this is because we're doing it by hand. You know, you want to step up uh, gradually in your size. So we're just now that we got the chips cleaned out, let's go ahead and run it in there. Make sure it's nice and open. We can take our main shaft and check it, but it still doesn't go up in there far enough. And if you guys want to see something, guys, post in the chat. So we're going to take the 190.193. And we're going to go to the 0.196. This is 4.85 millimeters. Go ahead and lock it down. We're going to grab our head. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, a good practice to get into is go a little bit. And then as you're twisting, just kind of pull, pull out on it and clear them chips out. That way, it cuts a lot better, like a lot better. If you want to use some cutting fluid, you can use cutting fluid, but this is aluminum, so we really don't have to worry much about it, but it will gum up your bits if you're working too hard. All right, I can see the tip right there. Go ahead and pull that up. And now, wrong way, Beavis. We're gonna pull that one out, and we're gonna to go to the .199, which is the closest I have to a five millimeter bit. Hey now, what are you doing? And again, we can take our main shaft and we can check it. Still not going in, but it's really close. I can feel it wanting to. So this one is sized almost exactly to that main shaft.
and it just got really tight so I'm gonna go ahead and try to back it out without filling my keyboard full of metal shavings as you can see got all them shavings there uh, sitting inside the grooves of that drill bit let's see how far that goes in there now yeah see that goes a lot farther so we're gonna go ahead and keep going until I can just see the tip of that drill bit through the uh, feathering shaft hole Jacob what are you up to today man and I know you're gonna want to be tempted to uh, power this drill up and do it that way trust me don't because your hand can slip off of this it can get down here fingers get chowdered by the drill bit and if you have drill bits like mine they're freaking sharp all right there we go got more chips on here cool deal always 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 have some q-tips around we're just going to go ahead and run that through there run it through here Clean out all those chips. Don't put it back in your ear. Where'd my main shaft go? My main shaft. Oh, I tried to run away. All right. So you have two different sides of this. Uh, this hole here is closer to the end. This is the side that goes down. So you want the one that's further away. So now, as you can see, it slides much further in there. There's not a lot of play. Once we put the bolt through it, it should clinch it up. I know you guys are asking, why didn't you just cut the main shaft and do it that way? Well, for one, whenever you order a new main shaft, you would have to recut it, redrill it, and drilling on round bar stock is a royal pain. You gotta put a flat spot on it, or you gotta have a drill press, or you gotta have something. So, let's see. Let me check something right quick. So now what we got to do is we got to drill a hole straight down through this, eight millimeters higher than that hole. That hole needs to be two millimeters. And I don't know what size this is. In millimeters I can't remember aha the bit we use to uh, drill the arms is actually two millimeters so now have that on there a little tight put all my drill bits up now we're going to chuck up this two millimeter job and this one we are going to be using the drill But as you can see, I've, I've choked up on that bit a lot. Let's see, that goes to the HK. I've got so many parts laying on this desk, I'm having to keep everything separated. If you have a center punch, use a center punch. For me, I'm just gonna lay it down, put my drill bit on the mark, And just get her started that way I can bring it up here and you guys can see what I'm doing you guys post up in the chat what are you guys doing usually you guys are just like talking it up so keep your finger out the way you guys see that you guys can kind of see that keep your finger out the way a little bit of pressure you should get some nice little curly cues coming off of it it should pop through and as you saw it grabbed that's what that big one will do so I'm just going to kind of back it out a little bit now we can grab the original bolt that come with this head and just make sure it goes in that hole and it does it's really nice and tight good and tight but you can still kind of work it out 
So now we need to put the exact same hole on the other side. We could drill straight through, but you know, you could kind of get off kilter a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna set him to eight millimeters, and we're just gonna score a new line on there. Seven. There's eight millimeters. Go ahead and lock it down. Hey, Chicago or uh, Syndicate. <laughs> I saw Chicago posted underneath you. What's going on, Syndicate? I'm taking a break from trying to figure out my new 3D printer. They can be kind of a pain. All right, I got to put the old man glasses on. Hopefully, I don't get any metal in my eye. Then all you do is just uh, find the center of the original hole and then just kind of run it across. <laughs> just got home and seen the Twitter notification. Right on. All right. Got that one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set it down so that I can get the bit exactly on it. This will be so much easier in my drill press. I have not finished. That's what we're working on, man. All right. Got my starting hole so I can bring it back up here for you guys. Yep, you guys can see that. So now... And whenever you're having to hold it like this, go slow. If you want... You can turn your clutch down. I'm going to turn it down to one. That way, if it grabs, it'll stop. And on this one being brushless, it stops really good. So, just trying to feed it in nice and slow. Get your finger out of the way. There's a hole on that other side. There we go. Got it all the way through. So now, let's see. Longer. That one goes here. Yep. There's a little bit of a little bit of flashing on the back side, and it doesn't look like it's going all the way up in. And it should be. Oh, there it goes. There's a little bit, of, a little bit more flashing in there, and there we go. So, right there, and I'm gonna hold my thumb right there. That's where the the new hole is located, and if I pull it back to the old hole, there you can see the difference. That right there is why we couldn't use the links and why we couldn't put this head on there. And that is how you take your original head and you modify it to actually work. <laughs> you don't have to go out and buy a DFC head from Taro, which I actually do have on the way, by the way. Um, here's the other thing. Let me, let me grab the other camera real quick. Get off of me. All right, I'm going to grab the other camera. We're going to bring the light source down because that camera... It's almost like a high-speed camera. I think everyone is waiting for the blood with... Yeah. I've done that more than once. Alright, we got that on there. Where'd the head go? So, if you look here, you can see the new hole and the old hole. The old hole is just... It's got a round uh, place around it. And if I turn it around, again, that's round. That's where the nut was sitting, but that is round. But check this out. We had to use a backer. Let me put it put it in there. We had to use a backer on that nut. Where's the focus on this thing? Because it would just spin. But now that we put the hole up here, if I can get it over there. Uh oh, where'd that go? Holy crap. Sausage fingers, come on, work with me here. Let's see, I need something to push down on this with. Alright. 
as you can see it actually locks into place now so you no longer need a backer for this nut and yes let me let that drop on the other side where the bolts gonna be which I mean you can put it on either side but whichever side the bolts gonna be on the bolt is recessed uh, into that as well and I'll just prove that here right quick like I say this thing is pretty tight we could probably waller that out a little bit but as you can see perfectly centered ish right on now another thing you can do you notice this slot right here we're no longer putting a bolt into this hole and we got David Payne giving another severe weather update we could take that slot and go ahead and bring it all the way up but I'm not gonna do that I I think it'll be fine if we do have any kind of head wobble we will be uh, taking this slot and bringing it higher so go ahead and turn that off no I said turn off metal shavings everywhere this is why I do this kind of work out in the shop so now we can take this head put it on the original main shaft put everything back together it lowers the head which means our linkages are now long enough so I need to find the linkage and I need to find some ends to put on it and we're going to put that original head back on the uh, ALZRC 450 Demon 450 Fast Pro Version 2 Align Clone the name's about freaking that long in uh, 12 pixel text so anybody have any questions uh, while I get aluminum shavings off of my hand before they start digging into skin anybody got any questions so ha huh? I did not put a drill bit in my finger this time. I have done that though. And it freaking hurts. <laughs> Alright, so just just to see, because I am about as curious as you guys are, I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, this is the swash plate with the swash driver. This swash driver is loose. You just you pinch down one of these bolts and it pinches it pinches it on the shaft. Uh, we're gonna put that on. Then we're gonna take the head, we're gonna go ahead and put it on. Everything is without thread lock because we are just testing here. Oh, wow, that is tight. Good and tight. That just means that bolt won't be flopping around in there. Syndicate, Tony, how to avoid flying blades? Uh, tighten, thread lock, use good bolts. No, it shouldn't happen. Uh, you know, you need to figure out if you're just not using thread lock, if there's oil inside the feathering shaft. If uh, And this is a nylon lock nut, so we actually don't need to use thread lock on it. But, uh, yeah, make sure there's no oil inside the feathering shaft. Make sure there's no oil on the, uh, on the bolts. Can't even think. I can't even see. But, yeah. So, let's see if I can... Uh, let's use this one. All I'm doing is trying to get that hole wallered out to where I don't have to actually thread it in, but it doesn't look like it's going to go. Trying to get the flats of the uh, of the bolt or of the nut recessed down in there so that we don't have to have a backer. I love that, and I don't know why. They would put that bolt hole so freaking low. Because now, oh yeah, tightened up real good. So let's check for play. There is maybe a hundred thousandths of a play, of, of play in there. Yeah, I ain't worried about that at all. One thing we could do now, now that we have a hole that we can put a drill bit in, we could go ahead and drill through this main shaft and with the hole already being in the head it tacked as a guide that means it won't start wandering off on you but we could drill through there and put another bolt through there so you have two bolts holding this head on and it would pinch it to the shaft and it would give you like redundancy you know servers use it all the time all right now i need to figure out which blade grip is what okay that one's missing Where is the, um, 
Not on there. You're missing a piece. You're missing the outer race. And there is metal shavings everywhere, and I'm fixing to mess with thrust bearings. Horror movie. Oh, it is scary when it happens on a bigger helicopter. No, you just, like I said, you just got to make sure that you have everything set up correctly. Why am I missing the outer race? I should not be missing that. Because I didn't take it out. But that little sucker ain't here, I'll tell you that. Okay, well, I guess I'm not going to be putting the head back together. Because I'm going to have to go find my bag of goodies that has another thrust bearing in it. You got that thrust bearing. There's that, and that's the inner thrust bearing. I'll bet you that sucker's on my floor somewhere. Uh, Y'all post up. Let me know what uh, if you have any questions or anything. If you have any questions or anything. I don't know if you could actually hear me when I said that. I am going to invest in hardwood flooring just for this reason. <laughs> Let's see. It's not under my mouse. It's not under my keyboard. There goes the camera. Hey, Hans. What's up, brother? Hey, Michael. I know those are out of order. Not under my mouse pad or mouse aluminum piece. Huh. I right, know. Don't do that. Been really busy at work lately. Hey, me too. Alright, let me back up. No. That sucker ain't nowhere. Thankfully, I've got a lot more of those. All right, so what happened with the head? So with the head, all right, I'll get the uh, I'll get the other camera out so you guys can see it better. Uh, with helicopters, that's the 300 and 500 is your blade length in millimeters. Uh, on planes, it's wing, and it could be either in millimeters or it could be in inches. We are looking for parts in the carpet because I'm missing the outer race for a thrust bearing. And actually, now that I'm looking, I'm missing the bolt for it too. I'll bet you that rate. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Hey, it just proves that I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Yeah. So yeah, I forgot. I left it on here, and the uh, the damper was holding it on. Never mind. Once I realized about the bolt, because unless you have a tool, you either have to chowder this all up uh, by holding it with pliers, or uh, have a tool which is basically a one-way bearing that grabs a hold of it so you can take that other bolt out if it's metal get a magnet dude there's so many metal pieces on this floor right now it's redonkulous all right so put the old man glasses back on but anyway uh, let me get this head back together and I will uh, I will show you guys exactly what I was doing so I need to move that all right we got that race on there one thing I'm noticing Okay, you guys need to see this. You guys, yeah, you guys need to see this. This isn't a deal breaker on the helicopter uh, at all. Let me get my camera. And I wish I had a proper studio. 
let me turn the camera back on and we'll go ahead and fade that over all right focus that in for you guys so get a little shadow this is the outer race on the other side not the side that's bolted onto the feathering shaft that's not what I'm wanting to show you guys this right here is what I'm wanting to show you guys this is the roller bearing five points to the first person that tells me what the issue is Come on. I know there's a delay in this, so I'm getting oh my god. Look at that. Look at that. I got metal shaving all up in my hand. <laughs> Jacob wins the gold star. There's no freaking grease. There is absolutely no grease in this thrust bearing. And what that's going to do is basically it's going to overheat and it's going to prematurely wear it out. It may not overheat because they actually don't move much. But a ding ball. Did you actually see a ding? I didn't see a ding in any of the balls. Is my thrust bearing singing soprano? No. Everything I see in the uh, ball bearings looks good. They look nice and smooth. But yeah. It's not rusty. Those balls should be stainless steel. But there's no grease in it. So, guys, the bolts in the feathering shaft were thread locked, so they would not they wouldn't have come apart in the first few flights anyway. Uh, but because there's no grease, take it apart. Seriously. Okay. So we can get the feathering shaft. We can go ahead and pop that through here. We can put the bearing on here. And then we can put our spacer on here. Sing a soprano. <laughs> um, we can take our dampers. And this one does, it doesn't have the hard plastic like the DFC does. This one does actually have pretty pliable rubber. Go ahead and work this in. There's no oil on this shaft either, so it's a dry fit. It's going to have some tension, and I need this one. We'll go ahead and slide that all the way through. This is a leading edge, and I do have a linkage rod on here. In fact, I think I got, yeah, I got a linkage rod on each one of them. Let's go ahead and make sure that's pushed all the way through. Take our other one. Slide our spacer on here. Doo -doo -doo. I can hear Jeopardy music playing in my head. That that back bearing just doesn't feel. There's no play, but it just kind of falls in. So if you guys have any green thread lock, you could use it on that back one. Unless you just like taking your stuff apart all the time. Slide that down on there. Go ahead and just plop our our bearing in there. And we'll plop our race and get it seated. Now we'll throw the bolt on it. And again, we're not we're not building this to put on a helicopter this time. We're building this for testing. Okay, there it's spinning the feathering shaft. Everything is also smooth. And these linkages are the same length. Go ahead and pop them onto the swash plate. I have not tightened the swash driver yet, but I will. Why is, oh, oh, I put it on the other head. I was like, why is this thing missing one of the balls on the outside? <clears throat> So now, 
we had, I remember we set, I set these kind of halfway in the middle, the linkage rods of the threads, so that we had some play. So what we're going to do, we're going to move the swash plate up until we have about zero degrees, as you can see with the, uh, with the arms. Then we're going to take and move our swash driver up. As you can see, we are still... Yeah, they, we need to be extended just a little bit further, but I could take and shave the top off of this. But we're getting plenty of positive pitch out of it. And then, of course, we'll get plenty of negative pitch out of it. This could actually go lower. So that's got me wondering. I just happen to have an old DFC shaft somewhere over here. Is this the DFC? Yes, it is. So if we put that ring to ring, no way. No freaking way. The DFC shaft, if we would have put the DFC shaft on, it would have lined up with that hole, the original hole in the head. It is eight millimeters shorter on the hole than the fly barless main shaft. So we could actually lower this head down eight, mil, eight more millimeters. That is ridiculous. Why would they... I don't know why they would do that. That's that's got me scratching my head like crazy. All right, let's see. It's that one there. I need to go up. I need to go perpendicular, and we need to tighten. Are you guys think, dude? Why are you guys not doing anything in the chat? Chat it up. Okay. So right there, the swash drivers are straight across, and we're showing a little bit of negative pitch. Right there, we have positive, or we have uh, zero, zero degrees of pitch. And the swash drivers are just a little bit high. I mean, just, yeah, we could take that out. No problem. But now it makes me when I put some shorter links on here and use a DFC main shaft, this is the one that come off the DFC head and I didn't trust that it was flat. So I went out and I got my bag uh, of brand new main DFC main shafts. Uh, Jared, what's up? Chat, chat, chat. Yes, chat, chat, chat. chat, chat, chat. That reminds me of a song or something. No. What was it? Cha, cha, cha. Yeah. So what are you looking for on this setup? What do you mean, what am I looking for on this setup? I wasn't looking for anything. Uh, I actually, we just, uh, in the very beginning, we showed how to drill. <laughs> Those are metal shavings out of this head. We showed how to drill this head because the original hole was right here. You guys, you guys see that? Yeah. Anyway, the original hole is way down here. Well, we move that hole eight millimeters higher so that the head sits down on there further. And then, now that I just grabbed the DFC main shaft, I just lined up basically collar to collar, and I looked at the holes, and the original hole that's in the bottom lines up with the hole on the DFC main shaft. So this main shaft, the hole is eight millimeters higher than it is on this one. Eyeballed eight millimeters. So hey, where are you going? Uh, watching me while you're finishing up work. <laughs> well, I'm sitting here watching these storms because, dude, these storms are legit, man. 
These storms are dropping tornadoes like crazy. The DFC shaft would have done what I just did. Uh, I took and I uh, we had to take a point one a point one nine nine inch or a five millimeter drill bit and we had to drill out the inside where the main shaft goes because it didn't go all the way up in there. And then we took a, it was a two millimeter that is actually still on a drill. We took that two millimeter and we drilled a new hole for the bolt to go through. And I actually like it better because as I was explaining before, the nut is actually captured on the side. So you don't have to have a backer. You don't have to have a pair of pliers to get it off and stuff like that. So, Is there any reason to put the other main shaft on? Uh, well, I mean, we can get the head eight more millimeters, eight millimeters lower, eight more millimeters lower. Yeah, I failed English class. <laughs> so yeah, right, right about there is about zero pitch, and it's just slightly up on the swash drivers. That's not a deal killer. But I do think I want to take this out to the garage and I think I want to grind that lip off of there because all this swash driver is bolted to if I get Lego Mago if I get this these mixing arms are mounted to the to a block that excuse me, that looks just like the block that's clamped on there. So this is an old old design uh, with the floating uh, swash driver block. Very old design, uh, very easy to get it turned off. Uh, just a little bit off to where if you hit forward cyclic, it would actually kind of go off in one direction or another because everything's not timed. Um, now one thing, uh, with what Jared says, so the DFC will be better. Actually, if we do put the DFC head on there, we have lowered it, if we lower it another eight millimeters, we would actually get it down to the DFC head height or basically the height like the Goblin has. And we would still have swash drivers on there. We wouldn't have the DFC links. We would still have these links, which will actually fail if you get into crash before your servos, usually. We may do that. Maybe, maybe. There's some other geometry that goes along with that because once we do that, I guess I could cut the bottom of the uh, head block off. That way the swash driver can go up further because that would actually limit how much uh, travel our swash plate had. And man, that is still wicked tight. I think I should do a video on how to make a ball reamer. Well, it goes on to prove uh, that you really need to freaking build anything. I have no clue what you just put in uh, quotes there, Hans. Remind me as an airsoft gunsmith. <laughs> Eight millimeters lower. What advantages would that have? Uh, lower center of mass. It puts the, the disc uh, closer to the center of mass or the center of gravity on the uh, helicopter. And... It's more responsive. It looks better in my opinion. But one thing you got to look out for is you got to make sure that your head on the uh, grips, you got to make sure you can't move it like this. Because if it's got a lot of play that way, your blades could actually go down and they have a better chance of hitting your tail boom. And, well, they call it a tail boom for a reason in that aspect. Not really. It's a, but yeah, you know what I mean. So lowering gives strength to the links as they don't have as much flick. Uh, not really that. Um, what I was stating there is the DFC links, these swash drivers that are on here right now, uh, these bars going across there, those are not there on a DFC. Instead, you have this thick arm that comes down that acts as a swash driver. And if you get in a crash and it pushes it down, well, as you can see, you push down the blade grip, it's going to push down the swash which is going to push down on the servo. And if the servo linkage going from the servo to the swash plate doesn't bend, then it's going to take your gears with it and possibly break your case, bend the pins, and all sorts of just not good stuff. But here, you have not only this small linkage rod, 
and the small linkage rod coming off of the servo that could hopefully fail before the uh, the uh, force gets transferred into the servo. I train people English at work. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, because you had said, what was it? Fabrique Uchine, or whatever. Yeah, something like that. I speak English and bad English. That's the only two languages I speak. It's like that a line gear change for the tail torque rod the other day. Yeah, uh, I actually started putting the other one back together. I uh, put the linkages back on there, put the good uh, blade grips on there, and I should soon have some blades on the way. Uh, not exactly soon, uh, out of stock right now, but yeah. More information on that. We're going to be building another helicopter out of just random parts that I have around here. Boom striker bad. Ask me, I know. Yes. Boom strike suck. Just realized my Blade 270 doesn't have a DFC head. Yeah, uh, DFC stands for direct flight control. But if you ask people that absolutely hate a line, DFC stands for direct from Compass. Because Compass actually designed that. And now everybody's going back to the swash drivers. Because they are more reliable and they don't take out as many servos. Thank you, Miss. It's down there. Uh, I think that was on the update thread, I believe, or the update video. And basically in the video, there wasn't many people watching in the beginning, and I just went ahead and dove into it. Uh, kind of like this one. You know, I dove into it, I got it done, and then the end of the video is basically us sitting here chatting me, reading. Made in, oh, okay. Made in China. Fabrique. Okay. Yeah, everything's made in China nowadays, though, so. Man, them storms are looking wicked. But no, I was sitting here looking at it, and uh, it's been bugging me, because I want this head on that helicopter, and I was like, there has to be a way of getting this to work without having to order a new head, which... Like I said, I've already got a new head on order. It's a DFC from uh, Tayro, and it's on its way here now via DHL, so who the hell knows what that package is going to look like when I finally get it. Sitting here looking at how much angle I can get on this swash without it binding. So yeah, even with that little uprake of the uh, swash drivers I think that can work because I really don't want to extend that any more than it's already extended Hans said smash that like button I think I agree with Hans mm. this one's longer Oh, I bet you this is a smaller one. Yep, it is, because right there's the end to it. But yeah, I think that's the way we're going to do these live streams from now on. Basically, I'll have a project in mind, and we'll just dive into it right in the beginning. Because a lot of people are saying that they don't like the really, really long live streams. So, if I start it off and I just dive right into it, we get it done, and then I answer questions later... Then the people that are watching it later on down the road after it's been uploaded and it's no longer live, uh, they can get what they need out of the video sooner, and they don't have to sit through you know four or five hours. Button smashed! Holy crap! It did jump up there. Awesome! You guys are fan freaking tastic. So where did my other linkage go? Because I've got one HK linkage on here and one ALZRC linkage on here. The HK linkage is just slightly longer. And those linkages actually came off of this head, which is what I compared to this head and found out that there was a discrepancy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean this desk off before we uh, do another video. <laughs> this thing is bad. 
Let's see. Yeah, I don't know where that linkage rod went. If no more likes, it's cause I broke it. Well, if you keep smashing it, it's just like a light switch. On off, on off, on off, on off. Uh, wish I could watch more, but I have to report early to work tomorrow in less than eight hours. I thought you were at work. But yeah, I mean, does anybody have any questions on this? Or is there anything you guys want to see on this? It's not a Franken build yet. You know, I did put some aligned parts on it. Uh, this tail drive gear. Uh, I, that is aligned. I did replace the other ones like this in the front and back of the tail. I went ahead and replaced those with the line since I had them. Um, and that was just to get the gear mesh right. You know, I didn't, I could have wallowed out the holes and moved the main blocks or moved the tail block back or something like that to do the same thing. But I figured I'd try that and see if that worked because I suggest everybody get aligned gears anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're stronger. But this right here was, this was bugging me. You know, I was losing, losing sleep at night because this head was not working and I could not figure out why in the hell they would send 32 millimeter uh, links when it needed to be 39 millimeters and I'm going there's got to be something wrong here and then I grabbed my uh, the HK fly barless head and I held it up side by side and immediately I saw what the problem was the hole in here just wasn't high enough yes everything needs oil or grease Anybody got any more questions? Specifically about the helicopter. We will be getting into some RC car stuff. Um, I meant to bring out a 3.3 uh, nitro truck uh, last night whenever we come home from my brother-in-law's place uh, setting up internet out of his house. Uh, but yeah, we forgot. I even... I even Freaking forgot my crimpers that I used to make cat5 cable Ethernet whatever I'm still gonna take that shaft out of my 270. I'll report. Okay. Yeah Yeah, cuz just the way you know the tail is vibrating the elevator is vibrating the ailerons not so much, but um, It's just there's There's something it's either bent or the blades are out of balance or something check your feathering shaft, too. Uh, but check all your shafts, check your blades, and I don't have what are all the blade grips. There's those blade grips. Oh, I had the align head on there. That's why. Oh, damn, that was tight. Um, did you ever post where the uh, where your dials are located? I need to know where your dials are located on that thing, man. Well, there's places that you would use grease, like inside the transmission, uh, on any gears that are not out in the open. Uh, gears that are out in the open, like the pinion and main gear, you don't use any grease. But you, like, uh, who said that? Like Hans said, you uh, definitely want to use at least light oil on all the bearings. If you don't, you're going to have a bad time. Because it's going to chowder the crap out of them. All right, what I did is I pulled the bolts. These come out of the uh, just a 450 head. I pulled one of the bolts out, and this is for you, Jared. So where would those craptastic blades go? You know what? I've got these blades from Tungsten, and one of them.
There was a pair of them that had writing on them. Twenty seven oh two. Yeah, these blades are wicked out of balance. Like uh, one of them is twenty seven oh two, and the other one's twenty four twenty four, and that's grams, obviously. So these things are wicked out of balance. So it'll kind of exaggerate. But take your uh, leading edge or your trailing edge, you can kind of see there, take your trailing edge, put it down on both blades. And then put them together, take your bolt, feed it through there. Hopefully there's enough space to where this, this nut will lock onto them. And then tighten the nut down. I don't know if this, I may have to get a washer. Nope, it'll work. Just barely, but it'll work. Anyway, I bolted the blades together with the bolt that came out of the uh, of the blade grip. So we're going to take it leading edge down. We're going to get them flat, and then you just hold it. See there? I mean, it's it's a crude balancer, and it's free. So this blade is going down. The weight on that blade was twenty seven oh two. This one right here was 2424. Yeah, 2702, 2424, as you can see. They do this for props. So if it works on props, it'll work on these as well. All right, go ahead and fold that down. And we'll get a pair of blades that are pretty well matched. And we'll do the same thing. But, I mean, this is a pretty extreme example of out-of-balance blades. These things are way, way out of balance. I'm guessing he got in a crash and just broke one blade. Wonder how long Tungsten was... Hey, Lars. Wonder how long Tungsten was chasing that vibration. That's not a good vibration. Beach, Beach Boys had it wrong. All right, these should be pretty well balanced. Again, we're gonna put uh, the trailing edge, both of them down. This is the way I do it. You can put, you know, like you would have it on the helicopter. You can do leading edge up, one leading edge up, one leading edge down. Yes, please, get some more pictures of them tanks. I want a video. We need video of those tanks. I think they're shelf ornaments. Prove me wrong. <laughs> All right, so we got both those down. We're re relatively straight. Move it just a hair. So yeah, uh, Jared, I mean, you can use the bolt out of the head to bolt it to bolt both the blades together and yeah now like I said you can do it and I'll prove it here you can do it with uh, one edge up one edge down the reason I do it this way as you just saw no matter where you put it it'll always level out so we'll take that off we'll take this blade we'll spin her on around hold it crap that nut is never to be seen again so now both blades are in the exact same orientation when they're both facing down I'll just grab another nut I'm not even gonna try to look for that one the vacuum will find it I need a hardwood floor so go ahead and tighten that up that did not freaking tighten up that tightened up good enough I guess so now we have one edge up one edge down now we should be able to get it to hold and I mean I'll hold it from the bottom so you guys know that I'm not pinching it but it'll stay in any orientation that you put it in get one of those rolling magnets from good old Harbor Freight Ro oh yeah 
I actually want one of those and I just I, I want to hang it on the front of my tractor and just have it pick up crap in my yard because there's always something being dropped but Jared if you don't have a blade balance somebody was saying they didn't have a blade balancer and they needed to order one this is how you do it I mean this is how you do it for free so yeah it does work I think this blade is just a little bit heavier <laughs> and it works really well or you can go out and buy a blade balancer you can weigh your blades you can take it and roll the blade on something round cylindrical that's why I have heat shrink on this exacto knife so the blade has something to grab onto and I'll roll this along and find the uh, center of gravity on each blade so weigh it get the center of gravity and uh, We'll be happy to prove me wrong. Do it. Hans, brother, appreciate you coming in, man, as always. Hope you have a good day at work. Ugh. Is there such a thing? So, yeah. Lars. Lars, Lars, Lars. What are you up to, man? both sure to be 19 grams yeah if they both sure to be 19 grams and they both had the exact same center of gravity they'll be balanced but they can be 19 grams and not be balanced you know if, if the center of gravity on one is over here and the center of gravity on the other is over here then whichever one has the weight or the center of gravity further out is and that's like severely exaggerated but whichever one has a center of gravity further out is going to act heavier as it's going through the air. And it's known as moment of force. Just chilling. Hey, don't retract it. I didn't see that. Actually, I did see it just for a second and then you took it away. You signed up on... Oh, fantastic. When did you do that? Are you no time to lose? Oh, that's bright. Oh, okay, so you haven't shown up yet. Alright, so, for those of y'all just joining in, whenever this video uh, is uploaded to YouTube, which they automatically do their very long processing thing, um, you'll see exactly what we did to this head. And I'm basically diving in and we're getting stuff done in the very beginning of the video for everybody that watches it further on down the line. Uh, and then we take questions and we just kind of play around like we're doing here, like balancing blades for free. CG mismatch, that is. Yes. Oh, how to fix that issue? Um, if they're the exact same weight and you need to fix a CG issue... Basically, you take two pieces of tape that are exactly the same size, put one on one blade, one on the other blade. Whichever blade had the CG further inside, you want the tape on the outside. Whichever one had the CG further outside, put the tape on the inside. So that way you're adding the exact same amount of weight, but you're moving that weight somewhere in that blade. And if it takes more than a couple pieces of tape to, to get it right, then yeah, get another set of blades. Actually, I may, because you can have two blades that are two different weights that actually balance out on a helicopter because the center of gravity is different on each one of them. I may have to see if I can find out how to do that. I'm getting some new blades for the 600 and the aligned blades are coming off never be uh, flown again. I'm thinking about making a wall of shame for all the parts that have been broke. Whether intentionally or not intentionally. Let's see if I can find that nut. I haven't moved. I 
Oh. Found it. So they may might need to exchange them for me. They are brand new. Not necessarily. Uh, like I say, just take and uh, find the center of gravity of it. And, well, bolt them together uh, like I showed you. Bolt them together with the trailing edge facing down on both of them. And they should level right out. If they don't level out, one of them kind of goes down a little bit, then, uh, yeah, the center of gravity is off. But most of the time, you won't get a perfect set of blades without having to do something to them. I've been really lucky here lately. The uh, Goblin blade, uh, Blades, perfect. The Craptastic Blades that we did a video on, uh, the CG on those is perfect. I mean, it's weird. Be right back. Okay. We'll wait. We're all waiting for Jared now. So we're just we're just gonna sit back and, and chill. Come on, Jared. Hurry up, Jared. We're all waiting on you, Jared. Jared's holding up the show. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Now the show's pretty much over. We're just uh, we're having a good time right now. So I think my next step is I'm gonna put that head on there and see if I can get the original head uh, lined out with the original blades. Get that DFC taken off of it, and probably put the DFC on my Dominator because it has the Align 450 V2 Pro original fly barless head, which ironically looks just like that. You guys need to come up. I had you guys down so that uh, you guys could see the drill in the beginning of this video. How? Yeah, right about an hour. What else can we get in trouble with? For those that just uh, joined us, I do think we're going to be building another 450. Why? Because I have all the parts to build one. Or I will have all the parts to build one. Looks like they got some tornado warnings up in Kansas too. Those are kind of sloppy though. These ones down here in Oklahoma. Those things are legit. Come on, Jared. Where you at? I need a break. Not for a Kit Kat. Yeah, yeah. Give me hell. So, nobody has anything to uh, chit chat about? Surely you guys have something you guys want to talk about. Blow the chat up. You guys are doing fantastic on the last couple. Do it again. I'm trying to think of what else because I basically did exactly what I wanted to do on this video. I'm pretty sure he went and took his uh, blades off his helicopter. The issue with his, for anybody that doesn't know, the issue with his helicopter is you can see the tail linkage rod vibrating when he spools it up uh, going back and forth. And you can also see the tail, uh, the, yeah, the actual tail boom shaking up and down. So it's like it's got an elevator shake and the gyro is just a little overactive. So that tells me there's got to be a vibration somewhere. Maybe, maybe he's got a shaft, a feathering shaft or a main shaft that's bent. Um, it'd be really hard to have a, a main gear do something like that. Uh, if the pinion... If the pinion is not the right size on the main uh, main shaft, or the, not the main shaft, on the motor shaft, that'll cause a vibration that'll mess with the gyro. What else could cause it? But, or, yeah, blades. You know, if, if the center of gravity isn't the exact same on both them blades, but they weigh exactly the same, that'll definitely cause it. So who all is still watching? We're losing people rapidly. 
because when it's over, it's over. Hey, Mark. Took you long enough to get in here. We're done. Oh wait, it wasn't you that was bugging me to get the uh, get the light, get a live stream going. <laughs> I think it was the other Mark. Kept sending me messages on YouTube. Do a live stream. Do a live stream. Then I do a live stream. He didn't come in. <laughs> yeah, you. There's the other Mark. It's been an hour, man. You told me to do a live stream. Doing a live stream. He didn't come in. Or did you? Did you come in? Nope. <laughs> just your luck. <laughs> no, uh, what we did in this one, and I'll just I'll kind of recap for everybody. Um, we had this head, and this is the head off of the ALZ 450, ALZ RC 450. Um, and something was bugging me about it. Like I said, I was losing sleep over this damn thing. So I went, and I had an old uh, Hobby King fly barless head that was just like this in a box, and I was like, well, let's go grab it and let's compare it. And I put them up side by side, and I noticed that the hole that holds the uh, the head block to the main shaft was eight millimeters higher on this one than it was on this one. So what we did today is we drilled out uh, where the main shaft goes because the main shaft wouldn't go far enough up in there. We drilled that out to five millimeters, and then we drilled another two millimeter hole eight millimeters above the original hole, which lowered the head down eight millimeters. So, and then. I decided for S and G's to grab a DFC main shaft and I put it collar to collar and it just so happens the DFC main shaft, the hole is eight millimeters lower, which would have done the same thing without drilling a new hole. Go figure. So we're learning stuff. We're learning stuff. The storms are meant to be crazy over there in Oklahoma. They are crazy over here. I've got the radar up. If you don't believe me, I'm sitting here. You see that little red box about right there? Yeah, that's a tornado warning. Uh, they actually dropped the tornado warning on the one in the north. But yeah, I'm watching them. This is my time of year right here. Cool project. Hey, they called it a Frankenheli. I haven't done enough to this thing yet to be a Frankenheli. That's that's the nitro. That Yeah, that's a Frankenheli. That's got parts from so many different uh, helicopters on it. But you're right, Mark. The uh, the storms are pretty bad. They're going to go north of me, though. Now, we're going to get some really heavy rain and probably high winds uh, later on tonight. But... No, you guys, I mean, you guys have seen me uh, set up the heads on these helicopters, so unless I get a request from you guys that you want to see me, you know, take the EFC head back off and put this head back on and all of that, uh, just post up and let me know if you want to see that, and I'll do a live stream on that too, because I haven't even taken the helicopter off the wall uh, today. I messed with that thing all day, two days ago, and got the tail figured out, got the gear figured out. Uh, rebuilt that DFC head which took entirely too long I got I got screwed over on that one there's David Payne with another severe weather update David Payne's our chief meteorologist here in Oklahoma uh, apparently they're running tribes uh, what are the stuff you got to do on that heli uh, I am waiting for the 3GX to get here it should be here on Thursday uh, I could not find mine so Tungsten uh, sent me his um, so we got to put the 3GX on there, we got to get it wired, and we got to get all the servos centered, and basically get it set up and fly it. And now, we got to put this head back on it. I'm actually thinking about taking and putting a DFC shaft on it, and then, that sounded weird, and then putting this head on it with the DFC shaft, but using the new hole, which will lower it 8 millimeters lower than it sits right now. Maybe. I don't know yet. 
Um, I have yet to see a maiden or flight of anything live. I doubt you ever will, uh, because I don't have a camera person. And a static camera, I've tried that, and people hated it. Oh, oh, no, no worries, Jared. I thought you were just going to get the, uh, uh, get your blades off your helicopter or something. <laughs> they run in tribes. <laughs> that was a Bill Engvall joke. I can't take credit for that one. That one, that one's all Bill Engvall. Did you thread the other side of the hole uh, you drilled? No, no, the bolt goes all the way through. And the cool thing is it's actually got a place that's been uh, machined out. Let's see if I can get the light on it just right. You can kind of see where it's been machined out. It's machined perfectly to capture the nut so that you don't have to have a backer like you did on the original hole. Yes, change the head. I'll watch whenever you do it. What, an hour later? Hey, Jared, no problem. I appreciate you coming in, man. Yeah, like I said, I thought you were going to get blazed. You know, if I knew you were getting bandaged stuff for, uh, for a neighbor, then I wouldn't have been making jokes about that. So hopefully your neighbor's all right. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the forum and uh, let me know about the uh, balance of the blades. So appreciate you coming in, man. But yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, um, I've been waiting for the comeback from uh, from Mark. Yeah, I don't know if I want to put this head button back on. The feathering shaft was thread locked and it was put together really well, sans the grease. Uh, but the head button, the that bolt had no thread lock on it, so you will probably lose the uh, button in flight if you don't. Uh, put it on because yeah it would actually back out go for it okay um, but yeah I mean that's pretty much where we are on the helicopter right now get it sorted I'm trying uh, I'm, I'm trying to do everything on video so that you guys can kind of see what I go through I didn't. I knew the DFC head build was going to take a really long time, so I didn't want to put that on video because I literally worked on that head to get everything perfect for, I don't know, four or five hours. And seeing me sand down shims is not, ex that doesn't make good video. Any three bladed project past, past or in the future? What is the head button for? The head button, it goes on top, and on some of the bigger helicopters, you can actually take the palm of your hand and put it on the head button if you can reach it, and it's used, some some companies call it a break, but you can put your uh, hand on it, slow it down, or if Gina comes in here, she'll tell you that's what she does uh, inverted touches with. It keeps her from hitting her blades on the ground when she does that. But yeah, I mean, four or five hours working on that uh, DFC head and the tail, I was wanting to kind of play with stuff and I was going to put it on video, but again, I was making so many different little changes and testing stuff. I didn't want to put all that on there. However, I do still have, obviously, all the parts and I can put it back and redo how, what I did and why I did it the way I did it. So, I may do that. I may do that. That'll come later on. Not today. Because, like I said, <sighs> well, I'm tired, as you can see. But we got these storms rolling in. And you guys know my internet doesn't, internet doesn't work with a crap uh, when there's rain. Gina is a beast on the sticks. Copy that. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking of what else I got. I'm going to be uh, putting some different parts on the Dominator frame to actually stretch it to a 360. 
and then I'll be taking all the parts that I take off of that one after I stretch it and we're going to be putting them back on the Pro so I'm going to put my original Pro back together like it was I'm not even going there for reasons for reasons that y'all have no clue what I'm talking about but for reasons So yeah, I was thinking if there's anything else that I was going to cover today, and I don't think there is. I think just drilling that head, I wanted you guys to see what was involved in re-drilling the head. It's actually not that hard. Uh, just takes a little bit of time and makes a pretty good mess of metal shavings. Well, in my case, all over my desk, all over my keyboard. Should have done it outside. That well. Ain't nothing a shop back can't take care of. It wouldn't be the first time I've had to tear this keyboard apart to clean it. Let's see. So what's up guys? Anybody got any questions? What's the most modification you've had to do to a new build have you seen the video how to build a clone properly that would probably be it yes metal shavings are a nightmare because they are everywhere and they are non-ferrous which means I cannot use a magnet to pick them up that would be too easy. But yeah, I think that clone, I think that clone that I did um, took the longest, or had the most modifications. I'd already done one. And so I knew what was going, what I was getting into going into the second. So I ordered all the parts. When will I do a flight video? I don't know. Not today. Wind's kicking like 30, 35 mile an hour right now. Need to see one? You really don't want to see me fly. It's it's atrocious. Tips on polishing a tail shaft. Are you talking about that shaft right there? What'd you do that you need to polish it? Chuck it up in a drill and grab some 1500 to 2000 grit and a little bit of water. Basically, a wet sand it. But now, once I get the 3GX, uh, we'll go through that setup process and we'll get this head put back on the helicopter. Make sure everything's good. There's still a tight spot in the tail gear, um, but we'll make sure everything's good, get everything set up, and then I'll basically just do a regular video. Uh, I'll just strap that guy up on my hat. And uh, I'll just shoot a regular video of it going in the air. Hey, Scott, appreciate you coming in. And yeah, yeah, we'll be there Sunday. Uh, we had a blast last Sunday, and we're definitely going to be doing it next Sunday. So yeah, appreciate you coming in. Uh, sticking tail slider the best thing have you tried taking it apart uh, taking the slider off the shaft and all of that and getting like a q-tip or something and getting in there with some alcohol and cleaning the inside of that thing out and then obviously cleaning off the shaft you'd love to see me hovering the goblin in due time in due time Yeah, so anybody just coming in, we're basically on a Q&A now. 
you wonder how stable it is the goblin yeah i mean it's it's got an icon too on it so i imagine it'll be pretty stable we got to get those freaking skids off of it though Any auto flying drone like heli? Flying a drone like a helicopter or a helicopter that flies like a drone? If it's the latter, then yeah, I mean, you can get um, NASA and hell, they've got stability mode with Icon and Beast X and all that. All of them have what is known in the uh, quad world as angle mode self-leveling the older ones don't like the 3gx it won't have it and that's a good yeah i think i'm gonna put a set of old blades on this 450 on the first flight with a 3gx just to make sure it doesn't tip over is the tail blade my shaft or is it a brushless motor on the goblin no, it's a belt drive. Uh, there's a belt that goes from the auto gear all the way back to the tail shaft. Any sort of 3D helicopter, uh, nine times out of ten, it will not have a tail motor. It'll have a torque tube or a belt. go to sleep. I really am. Hey, Darren. Having problems? No, we're done. We're just having a little Q&A now. Get it on video, Mark. I want to see it. I always want to see maiden flights. So I always get it on video. But no, Darren, we're actually solving problems, man. We solved the problem of... Yeah, I'm tired, dude. These last couple of days have wore me out. Yep, fire the questions in, or we're going to go ahead and jump off here, and I'm going to move on to other things. Because there's a lot to do. We will also be doing a video on how to completely clean a helicopter. So, Murphy will be coming back. At least in a, in a video for cleaning. Because Murphy is filthy. It'll be your first off simulator flight. Well, best of luck to you, man. 1.49 a.m. Holy crap. Well, the Chief's back. Oh, I'm going to do it. Uh, I've already promised somebody else that I'd do it. I mean, uh, Lars, it doesn't really need any lubrication. I haven't flown it that much. But it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and, you know, completely blow it apart and clean all the bearings and re-grease and oil everything and I will have to do that one. Yeah, I'll have to do that one out in the studio because, well, it's a 600. But yeah, Mark, I uh, appreciate you coming in after bugging the crap out of me all day. Do a live stream. Then I do a live stream and you're an hour late. I got to give you crap, man. I got to give you crap. But yeah, um,. No, we're going to do that cleaning video. I am going to probably go ahead and put this on. I need to 
Oh, I need to make that video. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Add a scale body to something. Mark, I will put a scale body on anything as long as you buy it. Get the goblin going. I will. Blame YouTube. <laughs> I've been blaming Facebook for their live streams here lately. These things have been all kinds of screwed up. But no, nah, it's all good, Mark. It's all good. I was going to do this video anyway. But as far as the goblin goes, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I have no extra parts for that thing. If it crashes, I am so screwed. But yeah, we'll probably end up getting it going before this helicopter gets in the air. So any oils or lubricants to use on my 450L? That's what I use. Uh, this is bearing oil. As you can see, it's pretty thin. And this is bushing oil. It's much, much thicker. But... If I know that I'm not going to be flying a lot, or if I know I'm going to be rebuilding the head a lot, I'll actually use this bushing oil um, in the thrust bearings instead of using grease. Because it doesn't sling out. Don't crash. Don't want to crash. But it's kind of like going down on a motorcycle. It's not if, it's when. Remove the link skids with the hard land. That's actually a good idea. Just do a little harder than normal skid bump. But then I'd have to land it like that. Or catch it. Mm. I don't want to do that. So yeah guys, alright, uh, I am going to go ahead and jump off here now, just because there's some food that need to be eaten. Hey Ivan, have you noticed that it takes YouTube forever to download a video, or is it me? Uh, wait a minute, download? What do you mean download? I mean, it could be your internet connection, or it could be that, you know, things are just slow at YouTube. I have not done any FPV. Uh, metal blades? Hell no. We're not flying saws over here. But yeah, uh, you guys have been absolutely fantastic as always. If you haven't hit the like button, hit that like button. And I will, 98% chance we'll have a, uh, we'll have a live stream tomorrow. So, guys, can't thank you enough. Appreciate you coming in and uh, staying tuned. And if any of you guys are just now tuning in and want to know what was going on, give it a couple hours and this will go ahead and process and you'll be able to see exactly what we did to the head for the ALZRC Devil 450 Align Pro V2 Clone. God, such a long name. I need a name for that freaking helicopter. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you on the next live stream.